Welcome back to Nat Chat. Richard, I want to talk to you about guns. With, I'm sure they were around then. Um, did you actually use guns or not? Well, if you know, obviously you're talking about in the line of bodyguard work. Mm. Yes. Certainly not in Australia because you know, obviously we have very strict gun laws. In America, it is a case that, that the gun laws are far more liberal. Mm -hmm. The right over there had a lot of rights. <laughs> yeah. You know, right to bear arms. My attitude on guns was this, that first of all, I wouldn't be able to carry them over state lines because every state has different gun restrictions. Mm -hmm. Even if I could have. My feeling was that everywhere I was with the bands, whether it's a David Bowie, Steve, uh, Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood Mac, you know, there are always people. There's either fans, there's lots of fans, there's press, you're either mm. in a hotel. And I always felt that in those situations, if that one in a million, you know, should pull a gun, mm. and I pulled a gun, then twice as many people get shot. I just felt it wasn't appropriate. It really did get down for me that, and I know it sounds cliche, but I had to be prepared between, be between them and the bullet, mm -hmm. if that was possible. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds extreme, but I, I honestly had a feeling of almost immortality when I did that job. I was going to ask you that because did you ever feel that your lies were under threat or you... I did and I thought about it a lot and I used to visualise a lot. I would, I, visualisation was a big tool of mine on the road in visualising different aspects and scenarios. Mm -hmm. Somebody pulling guns, a couple of people coming at knives, whatever it was and I'd try and deal with them from a mental level. Mm -hmm. With the idea being, you know, that if it ever did happen, you would be reacting as though it's happened before, that it's not for the first time, mm. you know. So it, it was a very important part for me that, that if I had any second thoughts about taking that bullet or that knife slash, then I felt I had no place doing that job. Sure. Because most of the time it's like party time. But that one time when everything goes horribly wrong, mm. if I wasn't prepared to step up to the plate, then get out of it, don't do the job. And I never had any second thoughts. Having said that, when I finally, after doing the movies like we talked about, mm. I started to think, you know what? This is a good time to get out. I've had a great run. I've mm. had a great life traveling the world with these bands. I'm still alive. I haven't been knifed or shot. It's mm. not a bad time, not a bad time to chuck it in. And I well, think once I started thinking about that mortality aspect, that was almost like a little universe taps you on the shoulder and says, okay, maybe it's time to stop. But did you feel a bit sad when it was time that you decided to sort of let it go and to move in a different area or? No, no. because I was starting to have such a great time in the world of movies. Mm. It was like a whole new career direction for me and I enjoyed it. You know, it's interesting, I look back now and, you know, as you know, we spent some time with James Taylor which, mm. and the band. I mean, this mm. band were with James 40 years ago and I toured with all of them in the 70s and 80s. It was mm. like old friend week. Mm. To have those friendships and to relive those times was fantastic, but it honestly just felt like another lifetime that I was, wow, I did all that, you know? Mm. And, and I'm, I'm totally comfortable with the idea that I did it and now I'm not, you know, mm. because the world of movies for me is still something I love. Mm. And don't forget, as I said, that I believe everybody should have something that they're passionate about that mm. makes them want to get up in the morning and enjoy life. For me, mm. that was always martial arts. Mm. So that common denominator is still here with me. Mm. It was here when I did bodyguard work. It's still here while I'm doing movies and whatever else I will do. So I'm, I was totally comfortable with the idea of leaving it behind. Yeah, so I guess being, especially the earlier movies, you were doing like the hunky hero, you know, adventure action type movies. So you were, you know, still had great motivation to stay in shape, be a good example, and then, you know, be honing your acting skills in the meantime. So uh, I think, what, what was the earliest, the first movie you can really recall doing? Well, again, Octagon was the first one with Chuck Norris. That was in 1979. Mm. That was my introduction to movies. And I often laugh because my, my first line ever was, sit down. <laughs> I'm going through in my head. I thought, oh, pff, Academy Award for this. Sit down. How many ways can you say it? Until you suddenly get up in front of camera and then sit down, sit down, sit down. I'm like freaking out. That's when I suddenly became aware. And there's a lot more to this than meets the eye, you know. And I, and I also realise the parallels between acting and martial arts. 
you learn all this technique and all this mm. basic stuff, but mm. when you fight, you have to react and just do, and acting is mm. very similar. Anyway, it, it was an interesting experience. You know, going to Hong Kong, of course, you know, which, which you know about when I started working with Jackie Chan, that was a whole other experience again, mm. because now I'm in, in, a, in an environment where if you didn't speak Cantonese or Mandarin, you were like a fish out of water. That was very uncomfortable. An experience, though, because of the hardship, I mean, anyone mm. that thinks that working with Jackie is just all fun and laughs and playing around, mm. I got news for them because I went there thinking 12 hour day, you know, mm. fight stuff, mm. <laughs> 18 hours a day, seven days a week when we did the fight stuff. The first fight I did in Jackie's movie was three and a half weeks, seven days a week, 18 hours a day, I lost in then pounds, like something like 18 pounds in weight. It was grueling, you know? And I remember getting back to my hotel room with that and I said out loud, if I can get through this, mm. I can get through anything. And those sorts of experiences have helped me in good stead all the way through my movie career. Mm. I mean, because I, I was smart enough to be aware how many people get to work with someone like Jackie Chan or, or mm. Chuck Norris, the maestros of, of what they do in martial mm. arts and action movies, so I was very aware of how, how fortunate I was to be put in those positions. You know? mm. So then I also know that you know, you've done many, many movies, but also you've had your hand in working on the other side of uh, the screen as well, behind camera and try, you know, getting projects up and things like that. Like I know you spent a lot of time in Lithuania. Yeah, well, as you know, four years in Lithuania on and off for six months of the year it was on a a Warner Brothers series called The New Adventures of Robin Hood. And I mean, what a great experience. But I was originally supposed to go and work as a guest star and I got asked to be second unit director and stunt coordinator. I resisted it. Finally, I went and what an incredible experience. Mm. That opened up me up to the possibilities of when I get to the age where I'm no longer the young enough to be the leading man, the fact that I was able to learn about directing, about coordinating, about fight mm. coordinating, I mean, that's, that's kind of where most of my work is in, you know, in mm. these days, actually. So the experiences behind the camera have, for me, been just as rewarding as in front of the camera. Which I'd like to talk more about, but it's time for another commercial break. So you've been watching that chat, and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> 